Nathan's juice here and you're on the booze. <laughs> it's alright, Nathan, for you with juice. I ain't got any beer. I've got a corona, but I didn't pull what that out of the thing. I think you should. Seems we're in corona season. Corona season, yeah. <laughs> So you can do your VC10 with two, two tornadoes, Phil. Oh yeah, we're going to have everything in this one. You lot are all doing the little jets, by the way. I'm just doing the big bit. Look, okay, with that. Hello, good evening. Welcome to Flory Models Live. Here we are with you on Saturday night at 7pm on the 2nd of May 2020. And we've got Matt playing with his bush. Absolutely. John's into his 2012 bottle of red. What year was mine? Mine was probably 2020. No, 2019. <laughs> Little glass of red. Uh, Nathan's on Robinson's juice. Yeah. <laughs> and Matt's on... A sample by the looks of that. Hold on, hold on. Where's he come from? <laughs> oh, I've got too many now. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. I didn't think you were on. They all said to me, you're a kip. What? what? They all said you was asleep. Hold on, I'm going to have to make us all smaller. Hold on. It's gonna work. Um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Hold on. Why would it be asleep? Because you've been know. at work. They said you've been busy. It? Someone must get to work every day. Ooh, yeah, fighting John. talk. John. John, have a word. Can we do a six-way tile with a bit of foreign? I on think we. Well, we're trying. Hold on. Give me. I'll see what we can do. <laughs> if it doesn't wait five minutes. All right, look, it almost works. Oh, God, that's a lot of glue. I'm going to do that. I didn't want to do that. That's it, because we can still go there, and I think we can still go... Well, no, you've screwed everything now. Look, honestly, it's not a problem. Hold on. It's all right, we'll just got to go like that. You're in the, in the middle between us. Hey, what? Us four next to each other, and you in the middle. What are you trying to say? Hold on, hold on. Well, that's not a bad idea. Just shrink everybody down. Hold on, hold on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's it. Look. Look, we just be a bit bigger. Everyone will be fine with it. No one will notice. You used to have you in the middle, didn't you? I know, but I've, I've got it set up on a different way because I, I haven't done it with five for a long time, she said. Good. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. We'll, we'll be over here and you guys go over there. It'll be fine. Look. But, yeah. The PM crew can be bigger. That's it. PM Look, crew. <laughs> the PM side versus the Flory model side. It'll be fine. Yeah. There we go. Does that mean with the Flory top with the top off? Yes. There we go. Good evening, everybody. We trust you all very well. As I said, this is totally informal. This is just like what we tend to do when we're not on live usually. Um, so yes, join us. Literally, fun games, laughter, um, and that's about it. Really, that's all we really do on a Saturday night. Where else would you be, clearly? <laughs> Never mind. How was that. it? So, Not starting with John, how was your day, John? Um, hectic. Brushed off my feet at work. So, just to point out, because obviously a lot of people haven't seen John, because John was in New Zealand. Uh, full <laughs> story to this, John's a postman, so key worker, uh, and just at that point where everyone was thinking, do you know what? We're going to lock down. John buggered off to New Zealand and went on technically what's supposed to be a holiday of a lifetime, which it certainly turned into that. It was. So he got locked down in New Zealand. <laughs> and I wish I was still locked down in there, to be honest. I told you, when you was on moaning about coming <laughs> home, we did tell you, stay there. I wouldn't bother. Off, Seriously, I'd stay there. I wouldn't worry about coming home at all. It's crap over it. They're just coming out now of lockdown. See, you could have carried on your holiday. Yeah, you could. <laughs> I know, well, we'll have to go back one day. Yes. Mm. Well, hopefully you can claim something off your insurance and uh, get a bit yeah. back. That'll be handy. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so uh, John's with us down the bottom there. Andy, you've been busy out in your van today. We were just discussing before you came on air. Do you have a cat? I don't know. You need one, clearly. Why? <laughs> Well, if you're out delivering parcels in your yeah, wagon, you need a cat. Like that. I see. Right. <laughs> Isn't that John who needs the cat? He's the postman. Well, I'm the postman, John's yeah. got a cat, yeah. But, um, yes. So, anyway, good. The rest of us have done nothing. I've been bottling wash all day and labelling. Whoa, speak for yourself about doing nothing. <laughs> Bloody hell. 
Well, I know you I haven't. You've been busy, busy as well. <laughs> Matt's I been getting up all your orders. Hey? I thought you were having the day off. When do I get a day off? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Every day's a day off. That's why we're paid crap. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a proper job, I want proper wages. <laughs> so yes, worst union flag ever. Yeah, sorry, we're going for the. Um, I don't know if it was a flag. What we'd look like? Something nice. like that. Anyway, yeah. very good. Anyway, we trust you're all doing very well. How is the Flory family over in uh, the chat? Hopefully, everyone's on uh, G and T's IPA already. Well done, Chris. Good lad. Uh, don't drink tapping or lacquers, anyone. That's not a good one. Uh, or if you are, make sure you go... No, I sound like Donald Trump if I say that. Don't say <laughs> that. So I won't say that. Uh, <laughs> so yes, Rob's on Bacardi. Very nice. Indian Pale Ale. All right, okay. Very good. Very, very nice. Somebody must be on a pint of Spitfire. I can guarantee it. And somebody will be on a pint of Bomber. Because they always are. <laughs> So yes, good out. And obviously we are streaming live over onto YouTube as well. We trust you guys are all doing well as well. Um, and doing well. Hello from Gozo. Want that in... Um... Gozo's in uh, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, yeah. That's Malta. <laughs> oh, is it Malta? Or in oh. Malta. Clearly me and Matt are on the wave, wrong wavelength there. Lovely <laughs> 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 place, that is. Was it Zool? Zool, yeah. Zool. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yes, very good. Here we are all in there. Everyone's doing very well. If you've got any questions, pretty much informal this evening. Just chuck them out and we'll try and do our best to answer them. But Saturday nights tend to be the more relaxed show, shall we say. So, um, pretty much anything goes. Jack Daniels. Well done, David. Good man. Um, I lots of it. Uh, and hello from uh, Buenos Aires. Hello, hello Argentina. Hola. Hello Argentina. That's Hola. Yeah. Hola. Hola. <laughs> See, we're fluent. <laughs> That's the limit of our Spanish. That is about the limit of my uh, Spanish. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I will sort out my backdrop properly for these shows. I'm gonna. I did have a plan. I was thinking about doing it next week. I was doing it thinking this afternoon. Uh, you know my patches I've got. Well, I've got them all out earlier. And I literally got them all over in my office upstairs, all over my sofa and my bits and pieces. And I think I've got enough for a really good backdrop. Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we might might need to get them hot glued onto something. Um, you know what I did with the uh, F-16 intake, just photograph them on a wall. Right. And have them as the... Uh, you know, in Sky, you can choose your background. Yeah, yeah. I could put it on like that then. Yeah. Yes, that, that's definitely an option. I did think about that, but I thought about, yeah, it'd be quite cool because you guys have been sending me patches for years now and I've literally got carrier bags full of them now and uh, really ought to do something with them. So I was either thinking maybe we could put them onto, you know, a piece of fabric so we can unroll it. So it's like a tapestry, you know, hanging. Uh, or as I say, it goes on something solid. So whichever way, I think it'd be quite cool. I think if it's on a tapestry, we can take it out of the unit then and hang it where the stairs are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Sounds like a big sewing job. John's got his blue background look for later. Yeah, John's started his already, or he's going to do the weather in a minute. <laughs> I really need to get some posters, don't I, to go up there. <laughs> there you go. Look, Andy's at an airfield. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit yeah. noisy. Yeah, a bit noisy. How <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you do that? That's cool, that. You do that in Skype, just add it as your background. <laughs> you know where instead of the blurred background you can choose a different background mm. oh, well, I have to have a look at that then oh god <laughs> Jesus keep it clean <laughs> I don't want some volleyball event with you with it he, his head's the ball <laughs> hey I'm going to I'm going to find some Spaniel's ears <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got hello from Norway uh, Madeira Yes, we're all fine. Wow, you guys are truly all over the place. This is so sounding like the judging on the Eurovision Song Contest now, yeah, isn't it? We're far more entertaining than them. 
Yeah. And we but, can sing in tune. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> first question, and I'm going to sort of grab these at random. Again, apologies if I don't read out your question. Just repost it. It's just that trying to keep up with them all is a bit bad. And as the wine sinks in, it gets worse. Uh, anyway, so the first question is, or which 135th scale Tiger 1 kit is best? Oof. Tricky one, because you've got a lot of contenders in that particular club. I'd go for nowadays is right for model. I've got to tend to agree. And then probably Dragon. Dragon's the old school best. But it's best still a better. good kit. Family yeah. ones are really easy to build and Straightforward. very nice. The Academy one's not too bad. Yeah. There's the Revster one. Good price. I think it's got a few issues, but it's still not bad. Mm -hmm. I think the thing is with the Tiger, the way I look at it, you've got a price point for what you want to pay, I think, isn't it? So you can yeah. go like the cheaper. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Or you can go up to sort of Dragon yeah. standard of about 70 quid now, I think they are, something like that for a Dragon one. But I would probably say like Andy the Ryefield one. Is... <laughs> the problem with Tigers, it's very similar to like Sherman's. The purists will say there's something wrong with every single one of them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, you know, it's a lot, you know, it's difficult to sort like, you know, yeah, there's always going to be something wrong with them. But I'd say Ralph Hood Models is probably one of the newest ones and probably the best one at the moment. Yeah. And it's nice now you've got a choice of interior or non-interior because the first one that came out when I just thought of it was interior only. Yeah. Isn't it? But now you can yeah. get it out. So, yeah. yeah. Chris on our chat has said RFM, RFM or RFM. There you go. Yeah. The only one I've ever built was the Tamiya, and that I thought that went together quite well. I built the Tamiya one, and it was fine. And to be honest, the one that I did was the Academy one. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought that went together all right as well. But I must admit, I know nothing about tanks at all. So. Yeah, I was bad me, and it was all right. Yeah. Can you, so, you can pick that up now from Airfix, can't you? Yes. It's just actually come back out, I think. Hmm. Reboxed yeah. it, yeah. So you can, yeah. Uh, Andy, how is your Bambi doing? Bambi's like a whispering, it's like it's on ice. Is it? Go on, turn it on. Turn now it it's on. in situ, it might be quieter. It might be right. Brace yourself. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> thing. He's not switched it on, he's cheated. Yeah, that's amazing, <laughs> that is. <laughs> that's just like I've got a knackered oak fridge. See, to be honest, I can't, from my point of view, from listening in, it doesn't sound any different to the old one. Yeah. Doesn't sound, but obviously you're there, so if it's vibrations and that's the different point, isn't it? I'd say it's at least 50% quieter than the old one. Yeah, because Sam said it's a lot quieter, and he's yeah. an honest chap. Yeah, and Shell, Shell said it's quieter. And Shell can't hear it from downstairs at all. Right. Whereas downstairs, my old one, you could literally, it was annoying. If she was watching TV, it was annoying, whereas you can't hear it at all downstairs. So have you actually tried it in anger yet? How often does yeah. it need to top up? Um... Well, I think I've got a leaky hose to come with here. So yeah, just back to that again. Today. Come to the I age. To, uh, I need to change the hose, but um, yeah, it's probably well, it's, it's three times the size of the tank of the um, of the Sparmax, hmm. but it does like last about three times the length. Um, but it fills up about the same. Takes about the same length of time to fill up. Hmm. I mean, this is it's completely empty at the moment because I drained the top, but yeah, um, yeah, it, it takes about 30 seconds to fill up, and Sparmax takes took about 30 seconds to fill up, yeah, from on on normal use, right. but it lasts about three times longer. So, bang for buck, do you think it's worth the extra money? No, right, okay, but what we do, we're Not, asking the same question in six months' time, and you might change your yeah. mind then. I'd, I'd honestly say that that anybody who doesn't have to worry about noise, which I don't have to worry about noise, just that, like, said on, like I said on a post that I put on the forum, happy wife, happy life, and <laughs> <laughs> just keep her happy. And she was paying for it anyway, so. Um, 
I don't need I don't need any page up because honestly I can't it doesn't sound at all noisy where I am, David. It's mm. It's, it's think, the microphone. Yeah, the, the mic. mic that that is, yeah. I was going to say it sounds quieter tonight, but also one, it's under your desk now, whereas before you had it right there, and yeah. your mic you were using was right above it as well. This yeah, one is well, in front yeah. of you, so it's yeah. uh, it's definitely quieter to listen to from our point of view. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's like when we're all sat in our we're all sat. I mean, we always talk to each other on Skype, mm. and other times a car will go yeah. past somebody's house. Oh yeah, and it sounds like a V8 something. Yeah, and it's just like yeah. yeah. Sounds like well, and also, I think the biggest, easiest way is when we're doing live here, especially for me, because you guys watch my videos all the time, my compressor is going on and off all day long when I'm using the normal microphones. But to be honest, I'm using a slightly different microphone from the one that I use when I'm doing recording work. Um, to be honest, this one isn't the expensive mic. The big Rhodes, which I use for these two, uh, is different. This one's just a normal one. And I think it picks up the pitch. And I think that's the thing. It picks up that particular pitch seems to be very, very loud. Um, yeah. Like Matt's, for instance, sounds horrendous. But I've been in his when he's been spraying, and it never doesn't sound that bad when you're sat in there. It's just the camera, the microphone picks it up and makes it more, if you know what I mean. So it yeah. amplifies the noise. It does. It? It's definitely a bit over the top. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, you, go on. You guys always used to moan about mine going off, but now I've got it on like. I've got a load of old underlay and got it on about five layers of that. You don't really hear it too much now. No. So make it, make it go off and let's have a listen. You could have had five layers of underlay for a lot cheaper. <laughs> start, start it off, John. Let's go on, John. Start it up. Oh, hang on, this. So it's still louder than it really is. Yeah, I have moved it though. It's to the front of my desk now, whereas it used to be right back underneath. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, they're just noisy things, aren't they? They are just yeah, noisy yeah. things. Well, it is, yeah. But again, the thing is, you buy it, and it's one of those items you chuck under your in your cabinet or under your desk. You never think about it. it just delivers air. But it's actually quite an important yeah. part <laughs> of your setup, really. Okay, so what is the best primer for brass? Black. You can buy a proper metal primer, can't you? Does it? Is it Mr. Hobby? Does it mean brass colour or does it mean No, brass? no, as in for priming brass. As in priming the metal. Oh, oh, to it. Yeah, they do a... Mr. Colour do a brass... Uh, metal primer, don't they? Well, Mr. Hobby's new one, which is the new uh, Mr. Surfacer 1000, is claimed, if you read the spill on it, I have the sheet fit further down there, it says, new improved formula for better adhesion to uh, brass and photo etch uh, in general. Yeah, they actually do a metal primer, though, don't they? It's like a clear mm. liquid. Right. It, it, comes in, it comes in like one of those bottles, I think, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, like, it's yeah. a metal primer and you just brush it on and it's supposed to... Oh, oh that is, I think, just like mild acid etch prime clear stuff, but uh, it is supposed to be quite good for, for brass. I thought it meant like brass as in spraying brass colour. Yeah, no, uh, he's on about brass. as in covering, <laughs> as in primer. Oh, right. <laughs> Matt, can you tell Timothy about smear kits? Hey. Do I look like a gynecologist? <laughs> Put your stirrups in. Schmear. I think we're on wrong show. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, what about schmear kits? You're the expert. They're the old KP ones in Helikits. Yeah. Uh, mainly old, old Helikits. Oh, it's a bad name, that, isn't it? Oh, it is really. About it. really did. I'm like, <laughs> It's like oh, S and M hobbies, isn't it? Yeah. You know, traffic they must get and then disappointed. We've got we've got to twenty past seven. <laughs> yeah, far it's better yeah. than last week. We've got ten minutes. Yeah. Um, do your research on scale mates because a lot of them are their old. Oh, some of they did a few of their old kits which aren't brilliant, and then they've reboxed a load of Hella and KP. Mm -hmm. So it depends what kit it is. So yes, do your research. What do you mean by 10 minutes Phil started on the introduction to the show last week? 
Mm. He did that. So yeah, we didn't even get that far. Do you know, what? I forgot that. There's one because of obviously we were sorting stuff out, <laughs> getting on. I must admit, I forgot to do it this week. I had a good one lined up as well. Never mind. I'll save that for next Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Okay. So yeah, basically, do you? But at the end of the day, they are a. Um, um, where are they from? Are they Czech or Lithuanian or? I don't know. Somewhere I'm, around I'm... that neighbourhood, aren't they? Yeah, it's, it's one of the old Eastern Bloc countries, um, but I'd say it's a lot of reboxing, shall we say? Um, yes. We've got the mould from some of the old classics, um, yes. like we've done when we were in uh, Hungary, wasn't it? There was a yeah. lot of their kits for sale, schmear kits everywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. Quite popular over there. Um, yeah. Right. Okay. So, hello from uh, Serbia. Wow. Um, wow. Do you recommend texturing a T14 Armata? Or just colour is it enough? So the Armata is one of those ones where it's a very modern tank. Um, it does seem to have a lot of anti-slip on it all over. Um, but it depends on whose kit you're doing. Because some of them have already got them in the plastic. Uh, but again, you can easily uh, recreate that by you know, the way that I usually do it. It's Mr. Surfacer. So you put Mr. Surfacer on your texture you want to do. And then you come in with a sponge and then just... And that will give you a very nice texture afterwards if you did want to redo it. And you can do it as in panels. So just mask mask and tape, you know, an area around. And if you want to do this one in the middle, for instance, and then literally just brush some Mr. Surfacer on and then just come in with a sponge. Okay. And then depending on the sponge, if it's a nice sponge, for instance, uh, you get quite a smooth texture with it. And if it, you want something a little bit rougher, just use a rough sponge on there. Uh, another little trick as well to smooth it out. So it's more of a... Um, should we say textured is it like a casting effect rather than an anti-slip type of effect is to give it a uh, airbrush thin as well over the top and just let it melt in a bit gives you a nice sort of normal cast effect then uh, that's one trick but again it depends on the kit you're doing and what type of one didn't uh, one of the, somebody say that um, is AK bring out a new glue for doing texturing on armor so let's get this right. It's another weld action type glue that softens plastic. Yeah. And then you can stipple it. Yeah. So really, it's no different from any other liquid glue that's available from any other manufacturer. No. God, I'm glad they've invented that. Pop the label on it. Take saying. my money. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and they've got they've got a range of about four new good glues coming out, haven't they? Right. Yeah. And the glues are for what exactly? Sticking things together. Sticking things together, yeah. What? No to do plastic. plastic. <laughs> so you have one is a fast setting, one's a medium, one's a slow, one's a very, very slow. One's a glacial. <laughs> one's glacial, goes off after eight years, is it? I don't know. You lot are so cynical. I tell you what, we are, aren't it? But we've been doing this far too long, that's the trouble. Um, yeah. <laughs> hey, especially when I've just put an order in for it to stock it. Oh, right. It'd be brilliant. It'll be fantastic stuff. I'll have one of each. Uh, I tell you what, though, who, who somebody does, if, if you're on about the um, anti slip stuff, and I think it is AK, okay, do an anti slip paste. Yes, they do. Yeah. It's got a texture I I, to it. I don't know what that's like, but. Um, but yeah, that's probably an, e an easier option if you don't want to be mixing sort yeah. of stuff together because you can do it with um liquid cement and like tamiya type filler yes yeah but it's got to be like the cellulose type that thing texture is, one i saw i think it's one of our members did an f14 then he did the walkways or is it on a hornet one or the other anyway and he used yeah. that stuff on it and i tell you what it looked absolutely spot on it looked very very yeah. good yeah um i think there's a few different ways of doing it it's uh the thing is, I check the actual proper tank to see how textured they are. Yes. But, uh, but yeah. Can I run through a couple of questions in chat, Bill? Yes, of course, can mate. Um, where am I? Nigel says, Matt, just pick my airbrush, Procon airbrush up from sorting office. Missed the real Wednesday due to work. Very impressed with it. Thanks, Nigel. No problem. Um, where am I? One second. Uh, Phil says, "Question: Do you get? Do you think it's possible to get a stainless steel replacement tank for the Sparmat 610?" No. What no. you can do, if you wanted to, and I've got the review of it, is to get. Oh God, this is where it's all going to go horrendously wrong. 
but you can buy this one. Can you see it? Yeah, that little thing. Which is bigger. This one's twice the size of what comes with the Sparmax one. It's made by Sparmax and it comes with a plug. So you've actually got an auto stop start with it as well. So you can, if you've got like a compressor that doesn't have an auto stop start and it doesn't have a tank, you can just connect it to it. I've got a video up with it. I will show you in a second. Oh, this is really heavy. Uh, I can't remember what size it is. Hold on, let me show you guys. Hold on, I haven't got my sight on today. Uh, hold on one second. And we wait, we pause, we hang, we go. If your tank snafu on your Sparmax 610, it's not going to really help you, is it? Yeah, but if your motor's okay, you can just technically daisy chain it straight into this. Well, wouldn't it be leaking? Yeah, but if it's leaking out of your main one, it would never pressure it, would it? Yeah, but you can just bypass it and don't put it into the tank, put it straight into this one. You know oh, what well, I mean? Take the well, outflow well, from the actual yeah, the well, motor yeah. straight into the tank. Yeah. There it is. This one here. Go down and look at this review. It's for the Sparmax Air Tank Review. It's 5.3 litre. So if you want a bigger tank, you can daisy chain, and I do do it with mine. When I do, um, or have done in the past, uh, airbrushing, um, that's what people are running off. So I've actually got that with the other one, which is whatever it is, three and a half litre. So it gives me sort of seven or eight litres uh, of air, but uh, there's a review. But this one comes with, this bit on the top here is a um, stop start. So, but it goes to a, a, a plug. So you plug it into it and it'll stop the power to the plug. So you just leave it on and it will turn your normal compressor that doesn't have a stop start, for instance, and it doesn't have a tank into one with the stop start and a tank. So again, it's one of those things. I do use it. It does work and I have used it a hell of a lot in the past. Um, but if you're using it for not having to fill up all the time, so if you're thinking about buying it because like with Andy's, he's got a nine litre tank and it doesn't have to keep filling up, it does because the pressure drops in the tank and then it refills both tanks. So it's always just topping up. Instead of it letting it go to nothing, it's just topping up continuously. So each tank is running at 60 PSI of pressure holding. So although you've got with the equivalent of that seven litres, it's always topping up. I don't know how Andy's works. It might be different. It might drop down a lot lower, but that's what I find with it. The size of tank with those doesn't make any difference. So it's always, it's topping it up as often as it would be if it was a smaller tank, if that makes sense. And the important thing, if you have got a tank, remember to empty it occasionally. Yes. Because I did mine last week and the, the gunk that comes out of it is unbelievable, really. Hmm. Yeah, mine was like a. To be honest, we do have a thing running because I did mine the other week, and then obviously we've mentioned it. And there's videos, and with the the crud that comes out of them, honestly, if you haven't emptied uh, the dump valve on your compressor, please do it. It's important because we we it first came about a few years ago. I emptied mine, and the crap that came out, to be honest, was horrendous. And I did it live on air, and I ended up with literally like half a liter of junk come out the bottom but also shortly after that we had one of our members tanks explode on him um, but luckily it was tucked out of the way and under a desk and everything but it did go off so you think if you've got a 60 psi you know bomb sat at your desk it was lucky that he wasn't hurt with that one and then i think uh, steve had a leaky one and he's had a leaky one and you know so yeah it's just you do have to be careful with them just make sure you keep them cleaned if you have got a problem with your tank refilling more often than it used to if there is a lot of water in there that could be the reason why yeah it won't necessarily be a leak it's because you've got a lot of water in there yes definitely uh hello. good evening to steph she's in hello, hello steph from hello. seattle quickie phil chris yes. Roscoe says question phil anyone Ever tried the speckle nose nozzle from HS? Thinking of getting the Halder Strad CL2 wing at wings, still they stopped at hand and said that speckle paint. I didn't even know they did a speckle nozzle. Isn't that just where you turn the air pressure down? So it's it not atomized and it just flips it out. <laughs> oh, um, I must admit I don't I yeah, that's a new one to me. I wasn't aware they did a speckly nose. No, I wasn't either. No, I wasn't either, no. So obviously none of us have tried it. We didn't know such a thing happened. 
Uh, one for Matt. Uh, his Tamiya Alak has arrived today. First time using them. Good. Fast delivery too. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Question for Phil. Timberlake says, Phil, do you rate your chair highly? I've been sat on mine for the past about six weeks. My back is ruined and I'm looking to upgrade. What, on this one's ruined him? Yeah. Like, seriously, uh, I, I have no idea. Have you, oh, you have got your oh, lumbar support in the right place. <clears throat> <laughs> Make sure you use the lumbar support. Uh, to be honest, as a long-term sciatica sufferer, to the extent of I used to get it really, really bad, um, I have to say that since I've been using this chair with the lumbar support, which is in the correct position, um, I, I must admit, I do not get it as much. I used to get it literally every six weeks. It was almost like clockwork. And uh, you, now I probably get it once, twice a year if I'm really unlucky. Um, but, and I put it down to this chair. Unless I'm reading it wrong and he's been sat in the chair that he's got for six weeks and he's looking to upgrade and he's mm -hmm. wondering when to got what you've got. So before, uh, we've had this one. And to be honest, it's one of my best, as weird as it sounds, one of my best videos is this video that I did on the review for the DX Racer. Um, I have got over there the GT Omega, which is a little bit cheaper, and everyone thinks they're just the same. This thing, I can still spin on it, and it's silent. There is nothing whatsoever. There's no bearing movement, no nothing whatsoever. And I sit on this chair at least probably six hours a day, every day. So it's certainly had its money worth. I've had it now probably two or three years, um, and it is literally like the day. As I said before, I've got a tiny little split has appeared under here, but that could be me picking at it. Because now you know what it's like when you know there's a split, you end up, yeah. Anyway, the GT Omega that's over there, I hardly sit in it because it's on the other side. Uh, and it's very rare I'm working on that side, to be honest. Yeah, that one, the bearing's gone. So when you spin around on it, it wobbles. It, it's like, dunk, dunk, dunk. So I have to say, you do pay a little bit extra for the actual DX racer chairs, but I think they're of higher quality material, shall we say. Yeah. And to be honest, I had cheap ones before that, and they used to last six to nine months, and I used to replace them. So Just a couple more whilst I've got my finger pressed yep. on the pause button. Uh, Nigel says, question, I'm going to do my first attempt at figure painting tomorrow, Matt. Thinking yeah. of using 5 oils, can I brush paint them neat, or do I need to thin them with something? Uh, no. If you, and the problem you've got if you're thinning oil paints is you just end up washing them off and it's a bit of a pain in the way. I mean, oh God, the best thing is to base them up with a acrylic colour and then put your oils over the top for highlights and shadows. It's, it's hard to actually paint a face with just using oils because of the covering power and the drying time of them. Um, the easiest way to do it is if you actually just put the oils on a piece of cardboard, leach out the yeah um, the linseed oil, and then use the pigment neat. Put a bit on and then blend it like two brushes, so you don't have to keep to keep cleaning it. But it's a bit of a technique, and it's an odd technique that he explained. A bit like what John's got. Um, I would Google some videos on YouTube on how to do it because you'll get a far better idea watching somebody do it than me trying to explain. To be honest, I just use acrylics. I don't really go with oils on face as it's a bit, it takes too long for me. I ain't got the patience to wait for them to dry even if it's got fast dry thinners or whatever. The important thing is, it is doing that, you'll leach the oil out of it. Which does make it dry quicker and flat it's, as well, they'll dry yeah. So, Best advice, like I say, Google some videos on YouTube or, or not Google, sort of search some videos on YouTube about doing it. There's plenty of people who put there that are, you know, got videos to watch. Yeah. Oh. Night shift is a good one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've seen them. This one from Chris Riddle. He says, back, team, team, going to add some texture into my Super Show, which was, oh, fancy this one already. Apparently, Vallejo plastic, plastic putty does a good job with it. Going to try that, and he thought, I've never tried plastic body to run through a texture. And I've, I've used, and it's normally my go to, is probably Mr. Surfacer 500. I think you want something that, that, 
that kind of melts into the plastic, don't you? I think the yeah. Vallejo stuff is just going to sit on the top where if you're using like a lacquer based product yeah. or a glue based, like we're saying, if you're using sort of extra thin with fillers, yeah. the Tamiya fillers, it'll melt in and grip to the surface better, I think. Yeah, because if you're using extra thin, it's like melts the top the top surface of the plastic, and you can like use something to stipple it. Stipple it, yeah, to sort of like, you know, get the texture into the plastic. Yeah. It's better still because Sherman's, aren't they? Bit more texture in, I can't think. The Suka Shermans have got a bit of texture, but I don't think they've got a great deal. Can't think. I think the Ryfield ones are pretty textured, aren't they? Because I know Phil's reviewed the yeah. cake and I think the Fireflies as well, but um the Grammy statue, this still that Tammy one I'm doing, that M fifty one, that had a bit of texture to it. Yeah. Uh, Mm, don't know. Chris says, good day team, I'm going to do the Black Bunny scheme for the F4J Phantom and the F14 Tomcat. What's the best, best gloss black paint brand to use to achieve high gloss paint without any issues? Me ALP. Uh, thanks for everything guys. You're the best. Yeah. To be honest with you, I have to say, if one of the best gloss blacks I can do for an acrylic, it will be Tamiya's X1. And that's what I use for anything that's gloss black because it is one of those that is just very dependable. You've squared it and it just goes down and it does a trick every single time. Uh, failing that, if you want to go down, and I haven't actually tried it yet, but um, I would obviously highly recommend as well, make sure I've got the right number, because just Tamiya's LP1 black, I haven't used it, but I imagine from a lacquer, that should just give you an even better version of. I, I've, I've used it and I find it covered really, really well. Yeah, I must admit, I haven't tried Tamiya's Gloss Black yet. I've tried, obviously, everything else, but... Okay, I think I'd go for the LP1 or, yeah. or X1. Mr. Color GX2, that's brilliant. That's it for chat, Phil. Oh, right, okay. So I was just doing a bit of um, skewering. Is that right. half the length of it? Plus the That's plunk. half the length, yeah, I've got another one, plus the joiner in the middle. I'm just working out, you know, how... Yeah. To be honest, I was going to try and sort of put this together a bit, just to see how big That's it really... is. That's really is. Good, isn't it? Can I just say, when you've got your card with oils on, don't put it right where, on the desk where you put your arm. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good advice. I've done that a lot of times. I've just done that now. Well, well done. All over your new top. Chris has got a question. He said, ever since getting back in scale models, I've lost my mind. Could you lads help me find it, please? If you look in your stash, David, I am normally find mine in there. Just keep opening different boxes, and then one day you'll find it. Mm. Right, so like that. Hold on. And then we need one of these here. Oh, that's something you put on a barbecue. Yeah, <laughs> to be honest, it, it does need a bit of me. Oh, we're going to go too far that way, aren't we? Hold on. <laughs> I just thought we might just mop this up a minute just to see how big it is. Massive. Something for the kebab. Hold on. So, do you know, did they just live in the front little bit? Yeah. Yeah, sure. they weren't anywhere else. It was just literally in the this bit. That's what? it. So what's the point of the rest of it? Well, this has got all the cargo pods, and obviously the whole point of it was that's a nuclear reactor, and you probably want that as far away from you as possible. Yeah. I think that was the idea, the thinking behind it. If you're going to have a nuclear bomb that's pushing you along, it's probably better to have it as far away as possible. Oh, right. But what did what was in the cargo pods? Uh, cargo. Of what? I don't know. Food uh, supply, medical supplies, and irradiated food. That sounds. Like yeah, it. that's it. <laughs> yeah. Genetic. Oh look! Oops. I was just trying to mock this up a little bit, but yeah. Get don't... some blue tack on it. Yeah, perhaps I do need some tape and things. Might need some. Oh God. It's going to be one of those that when it comes up the shop. You probably don't want to move it. <laughs> yeah, when it comes up to the store, it'd be one of those that, Jesus, don't touch it. 
Hold on. You can buy a new straight rod, a metal rod from eBay. <laughs> Hold on, right. Let's try it with a bit of tape. Mm. This will be fine. What could possibly go wrong? Right. Round two. Everybody told me who's built this said, oh, by the way, the he the, the barbecue bit of sticking all your bits in doesn't work. It's rubbish. And yet, I've just put it all together and not a problem on it. So I don't know quite where people were having some issues there. Let me just lock mm. this in. There it is. Locked. It's when, it, when it all bends out of shape. Possibly. James says, James says what, Phil, what's, go, uh, what's Phil going to base the discovery in? What scale? It's 1 to 144, no, allegedly. What are you going to change it in, James? It? Yeah, it's 1 to 144. I, th I think it means what, what paint are you going to use? Oh, right. Sorry. I thought you said what scale. Um... There you go. But it'll be like that and a bit longer yet. And it's obviously got to have lots of pods. Um, so paint-wise, I'm going to be doing my usual homemade mix. So it will be my what I call Starship, which I have here already. Uh, so all I literally do, I take a bottle of uh, Tamiya XF2 and I add to it, usually, to be honest, cut the drops of buff. So it's usually a brush full of XF57 into that. What it does then, it color shifts it away from being pure white to dirtyish white, uh, and then it'll go. But again, I wouldn't read too much into it because it's purely just for it. Once it's then got, you know, the usual things of washes. So it was, it, to start with, it's gonna have a black wash right the way over it. And then we're gonna go back through different colors. We're gonna be picking out obviously all the panels around it front and rear and everything else mainly around the head section admittedly and that's going to be obviously all the uh, greys because it has quite a lot of grey on it and various other colours and then what we'd probably do is colour shift every panel just slightly different so you're just in your airbrush in your colour cup I'll just add a little bit of sail oh I don't call it sail what do we call it here XF55 uh, which is uh, deck tan um, and then maybe a little bit of grey with it and it will just shift each panel and it just makes everything look very much three dimensional um as we make our way through so yes so it's that and then it's still a bit longer yet it's got to have these on the end so it's that long huge <laughs> that's the same thing isn't it so i'll tilt your camera down a bit a bit too close if it doesn't there. do the weather i'm going to be very upset <laughs> a very own michael fish yes Michael Fish. Yeah, to be honest, man. this means that now I've got to play with a bit and find out the best way of yeah. do with it. It's all like off an angle somewhere rather than being straight onto you. Uh, Phil's got a question. He says, Hi guys, looking for, to start with the Tamiya RAF Mustang with Sharp Mouth. Do I preserve with the Tamiya decals all through? Or do I build throughout the build or do I use the Sharp Mouth? And sort of aftermarket aftermarket decals for the front doors. Again, this is going back to that thing we were talking about about um, Tamiya decals being a bit iffy. To be honest, they're not that bad. If you're not too worried about it, you can probably get them on. But just be mindful that it's going to take a few coats of your favourite um, decal softeners and setters just to get them to go down. But if you if you if it comes in the kit. I think I would give the kit decals a go first. I wouldn't just dismiss them. But if you were thinking like you've bought that Mustang and you're thinking about another version that perhaps are aftermarket decals, I wouldn't mind using them, if that makes sense. You know, it's one of those ones where I think a lot of people, you know, will just use them because they come with the kit. And other people will think, well, look, I bought the kit, but I want it in these markings. I wouldn't use Tamiya because they're crap anyway. But the thing is, they're not crap. They're just thick. They're just very difficult to get them to go down. But the thing is, they're very solid. And because they're solid, they don't like conforming very easily and things like that. It's fine if it's just, a, you know, a rondel or a roundel, whichever way you are, on a wing. Um, you know, but if it's something a little bit more intricate, sometimes theirs isn't the uh, the best. So basically then, if you put a sharp mouth on, that's going to be an absolute ball ache. Mm -hmm. Could be, couldn't it? To be honest, Tamiya decals quite like using um, uh, thinners, as in X20A, acrylic thinners. That's my usual go-to thing with it. 
Just make sure you've protected what's underneath it. I would say if you're not too confident, get some aftermarket. Yeah. yeah. To be honest. And last quick one from here. James says, question about the Haskell's 32nd BF109. Should the seam copper box fuse be removed or left in place? Leave it in place. Leave yeah. it in place. Should have a seam. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Richard said, uh, I'm still on coffee whilst you Brits are on the booze. <laughs> it's it's fine. It's it's locked down. I'm on tea. Well, he says that. He's just using the floury mug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dennis says, when are you going to build the Zero? Later in the year. I've got some, as we pointed out, if you didn't see yesterday's show, watch yesterday's show, but I went through my build list. And as you can imagine, there is some um, challenging, I think we're... What's the word we're using, Matt? Chal I think challenging is a good word. Is that a good word? Challenging kit. So I've got obviously the 48 scale B17 coming up after this thing. So we're going for something this big to this big to this big. It's, yeah. Yeah, so the man who's not going to build big kits anymore. No, I'm not doing big kits anymore. <laughs> well, I'm still doing one. This is 144. <laughs> the other one's only 148 and then the other one is like 172nd it just so happens they're huge projects but your stuff's arrived so i'll get in the post oh is that all turned up as well is it everything has yeah it's really Ooh. yeah are you going to yeah. be showing us a little bit of, of what's coming then later uh no because it's still in the box oh right okay i did actually open the box and it's all oh i don't want to empty it to be honest because oh, it's right. going to be it's everywhere. To get packed it, they've packed it so i'll show it next week it, they can wait yes. So, but yes um yeah your stuff's there so i'll whack it in the post yeah good so i will be starting then because i literally i've just been waiting on these bits uh, i've got to do a little bit more research obviously on the b17g uh very mm. much thank you to and i've still got it christina who sent me the b17 thing i'll be using that and a couple other references i've got for it so i've got the b17 up and then obviously next week i've got all those reviews we spoke about last week as well so we've got the hind the meteor the range rover um, and there's a few other bits around here as well i've still got to do like the tank crew i haven't done them yet as i found out yesterday when i was tank. looking what tank crew i've got tank crew i've never reviewed yet it's the uh, mini art british tank crew oh the um, modern british tank crew yeah all right they I think some, there's some stuff in this order for you might be to review as well. All oh, right, cool. Chuck it in then. I've also got somebody's um, Tomcat. Love you, mate. Does anybody want to buy a Tomcat? I've got Andy's here no. still. <laughs> you have an auction it. <laughs> Live <laughs> auction. <laughs> <laughs> Took me long enough to get it. I only had it for about <laughs> an hour. Uh, Travis uh, is just saying it's 6 a.m. in New Zealand. Look, John, do you remember those uh, days? I do. What are they? Yeah, they're 11 hours ahead. Was well, that Phil Skype in your way? You're still in bed? Yeah. yeah. I only did it the once. <laughs> I didn't know they were like, you know, having intimate time. I <laughs> thought they were very generous <laughs> letting me sit between them on <laughs> Skype. <laughs> oh, God. Lynn's hey, like this. Ah! Lynn's <laughs> like, hello! <laughs> John, I do have to say that story that Lynn put up about the railings was brilliant. Oh, yeah, cry. Oh, oh, my God. laugh as well. She'll read it out to me and I was crying. <laughs> she she gets up every now and again and walks to me, walks with me to work in the morning and then sort of carries on a walk from there and she thought she'd go the long way round. And you, they used, you used to be able to cut through where she went, but you can't because there's a, a fence there now. And I wish I'd been there to film it, to be honest. <laughs> the best thing is, is as Shell was telling me, as she was reading it out, I was trying to imagine Lynn said it in her accent. Yeah. <laughs> it was like... She's yeah. got the bruises to show for it now. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. yes, uh... There's a question from Trevor that he's posted up a couple of times that I've missed. This is a question for you all. What's the single worst kit you've ever built, ever tried to build, ever built or tried to build? It's coming up. Yeah, I'm just about to build it, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ask my me next. Kit. Ask me in about two weeks. Because so yeah. far, far, that thing. Well, the, there's nothing wrong with that, Pembroke. You've just made a meal out of it. 
You said that was worse than your Hudson. Hated. It was a <laughs> bucket to put together. Is that worse than your Hudson? You think, Matt? What? Um, what? The Blenheim. Yeah, Blenheim. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah. That's definitely worse than the Blenheim. Well, my this is my first ever Mac Two kit. Yeah. You know, for you guys who weren't watching yesterday, let me show you. Because I still makes my eyes water. Yeah. To be honest, I thought I got off the up until we did find the canopy. Yeah. Put your on. All right, let me show the boys and girls how good this kit is. So for all you people who like to watch me wince when I'm building a kit. Perfect from where I'm stuck in that. Good. So. We actually, to be honest, I got this, I opened it after the show with Matt because as you can see here, I haven't got a cockpit. So I was a bit worried, but anyway, we have found it, so don't panic. But this is, to be honest, this is one of the best looking parts. Okay, so this is the uh, fuselage. Right, so that actually doesn't look too bad. I must have, that, that, was, that was on top, wasn't it, originally? And I looked at it in the shop and I thought that actually... It it's when back. you get in here, things start to look a little bit dicey. So, and I, shall I show the people the problem that I've got with my kit as well? So, again, that's not probably looking too bad. So, let's have a closer look, shall we, people? Oh, sorry, hold on. Um, turn the other camera on. Let me just zoom it down. That's close enough. Okay, that's spooky. See, look at that screws. Look at them. Gonna need to fix them. So wow. that doesn't look too bad, does it? Until you realise that actually my wings are all cracked. So I've got big cracks in my wings. Are both of them cracked? They're all cracked. All of them. After we came up, well, after me and you spoke, I had a good look round it, and they are all cracked. So, but yeah, That's mm. just... look oh, at those that. screw gates. That is precision engineering, that. Yeah, well, that. It's got some extra <laughs> thin on it now, but it's it. esque that. Well, the thing is, we're not actually over-convinced it is resi uh, plastic, are we? Oh, I um... think it's Wensleydale. <laughs> so, yeah, as you can see, this is going to be, well, interesting. Rustic. Rustic at best. So, anyway, there's that one. Let me just show you the other gem, which is the final sprue. And then I'll show you, this is a quick little inboxing to show you, because obviously a kit of this calibre deserves extensive instructions. So, yeah, look at that. Look at the crack that I'm going to have to deal with. So I've got a small crack in mine that goes right through. So it's like, oh dear, we're okay. I think what I'm going to do is, before I actually take it off the sprue, I'm going to try and weld this up yeah uh a little bit because yeah so um yeah for everyone reckon... who thinks that i just do nice yeah. kits that's a uh, metal fatigue is that what it is yeah i think that it... might be grounded that one it's an interesting <laughs> texture on the inside of the mold it's yeah quil... hey, that's, that's quilting quilting <laughs> i've got a chisel open in here obviously to open up for the refueling pods so anyway, as you can see, it's um, yeah, it, it it's going to be a handful to put this thing together. To be honest, it hurts to just hold the sprue because it's actually pretty sharp. <laughs> anyway, the instructions, because obviously you know, let's face it, it's it's a lot to do on this particular kit. So the instructions, obviously, this is it. You get one piece of paper, and are you ready for the instructions? That's it. That's oh. how you build a model, people. What more do you need? Do, what more do you need? So, <laughs> flight deck. And then, obviously, for your nose, you've got your gear that go on the plane somewhere. Doesn't actually point out where it goes. Um, and, obviously, attaching a wheel. Um, and then, obviously, I'm thinking that's the tail, but I'm not sure. But I'm assuming it has. We've got a few little parts down here for the actuators for the, uh, the flaps and think the engines obviously yeah uh we've got uh polished aluminium polished anything on this would help uh it goes through a couple of fences on the wings 
uh, we've actually got Dan in here. It's talking about the pito tubes. It doesn't mention about actually putting the cockpit in it or the glass in it anywhere. Uh, refueling pods, refueling pods being fitted in that slot that we saw earlier. And then this is the uh, center line refueling basket position. It goes underneath the back of it. And there we go. That shows it in. That's it. That, that is it. That is your instructions. There's nothing else. And that's why it's not exactly a beginner's kit. Well, or somebody who's been doing it for 40 years. You are a model maker, Mr. Flory. Am I? Yes. Windows you know are what? painted in this version. <laughs> hey, do you know what the oddest bit of that's going to be for Phil? Getting that term super duper stripe down the side. Yeah, paint. well, I was hoping mm. this was a decal. So the decal sheet, again, I've been robbed. Because I was expecting it to have like an extensive decal sheet. That's it. <laughs> oh <dear. laughs> At least you ain't got loads of stencils. <laughs> yeah, windows, yeah, literally, the saving grace, there's no lots of stencils. So that is it. Oh, okay. But it's not all lost because clearly they've got a backing sheet for the white bit for the uh, Air Force ones. Hmm. Chris says it could, be, it could be back for me no. Exactly. To be honest, it. as I did say to Matt, actually, when we were going through this, wasn't it? I did my yeah. my comment was the only thing that make it any worse would be to vac form. By the way, you do do the not proper decals, don't you? Uh, yeah, I've gathered that because there is it's like more like a sticker, is it? Yeah, I think they're more like rubbing, you know, like you used to get as a kid where you just used to rub your pencil on them <laughs> to get the transfers <laughs> off. They are. Yeah, I probably won't even be using them. I actually might have a word with Ron to knock us up some mm. ones for it. Yeah. So, also, a couple of highlights from the kit that did make me chuckle, because obviously the bag of bits, you don't throw it, is there's a wheel in here in this little piece of plastic, uh, which is actually packaging tape folded over. Um, we found a gear leg on the run. And we've got a couple of bits in here and it's very difficult to tell if it's a genuine part or a bit of flash so we're keeping them because i'm not sure genuinely i don't know so yeah so anyway hey i'm sure the instructions will tell you uh, yeah <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah luckily for me i've got the instructions show earlier and yeah. dear oh someone's forgot and dear mac 2 not a single staple in your box wow. it's like you know Yes. Shall I answer? What are you going to say, John? Hello, you're live I, on air. I was watching yesterday's show, and for Nathan, oh. they did yes. do 72nd, is it, <laughs> or near DO18 flying oh. boat? Okay, oh. fair enough. Yes. Oh. The one with the push and pull propeller. Oh, no. No. You wait to see what this kit's like. Really? This, this is the worst kit ever. I no, tell you, she's like a goldfish, that woman. Yeah. <laughs> it amazes me she's got an thing, important but... job. <laughs> you you bought that years ago at Telford. Yeah. For the dog of a kit group build that is coming up. Can I use this for that one as well? Does this qualify yeah. as a dog as a kit? Oh yeah, absolutely. I do think so, yeah. This one certainly does. Pull it out of the bag again. Let's have a look, Nave. Well, shall I show you the instructions first? Oh, yeah. All right. So, this bit of the instructions tell you about the Fury. This bit of the instructions describe how to build it. And this bit of the instructions is for comments and complaints. <laughs> comments and complaints. <laughs> yeah. And apparently it says here they saw extensive service with both the US Navy and the Marine Corps. As in oh. dead people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, there's your main fuselage, which has got like fairly sketchy bits of plastic card glued onto something and moulded in it. And it's like really, I mean, there's your control surfaces. It's like Mac 2 style moulding, isn't it? It's just like vaguely squished out. It's very limited rud. It's awful. I mean, it, whoop, there goes a the wheel. The worst part of the kit, though, I think that's the instrument panel, just a square bit of white metal. Okay. And that's your seat. 
I just don't know what to do with this. Spin it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It is literally just a heap of junk. That, the problem is that's not even worth attempting to do, I don't think. No. I think this needs to have a full review. Viking burial, I was thinking. Um, never to be built, that thing, I think. But it is just... Mac 2 is easy to build compared to this thing. And I'm not sure what some of these bits are. I think these might be actually the undercarriage. No, the undercarriage doors. It's an undercarriage door, so it doesn't come with an... Ins One of these must... I don't know what these are. They're just like vaguely cut out pieces of metal. You, you, you know, this will... I mean, oh, I don't know what to do with it. Well, I do. Is it recessed? It is kind of trenchy. Oh, there uh, is, yeah, I can see now. Sorry, you I couldn't see on that view, but yeah. Big enough to get a nib of a pen into it. Well, there you go. That's an awful kit. It's a Merlin model. Leave well alone. I mean, there's just nothing in there that you can use. To be honest, that is an old kit, though. How old's that? Um, That's very early. Cost me two quid from Comet Miniatures. <laughs> <laughs> What's your, Made in, your, in, in Somerset, that's all I can tell you. What's your, your worst one, John? Hmm? No, John, what's your worst build? Recently... Probably the Kitty Hawk Su-35 flanker. If I'm honest. Yeah. Um, that... I think the kit isn't too bad. It's just a shame that the instructions were totally crap. Because I didn't find out until after I assembled it that apparently, like, main wheel bays are the wrong way round in the instructions which would explain why I couldn't get the two fuse lash halves together um, yeah probably that I'd say it's not a great kit my my worst one ever was a 72nd SU25 and I can't for the life remember who made the kit because I certainly didn't because it ended up in the bin and the wings were that warped no matter what I did I couldn't get the warping out of the wings it was terrible and it just went to yeah, the horrible it was yeah right nasty kit what what do you say Andy an SU25 yeah 72nd I bet that was the uh, old hobby craft kit possibly yeah it was it was terrible it really really was nasty there haven't been that many uh, SU-25s. Uh, Zvezda have done one, haven't they? Yeah, that's yeah, not a great kit either. Uh, Rev yeah. It's Rebels uh, Rebox of the Zvezda one. It's either that or... Because Italy's Rebox somebody's, but I presume that's the Revsters. I have this, though, to tackle. Is that the... Uh, uh, who's that? By Eastern Express? And if you... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, bit of flash. Yeah, just a bit of flash. Hmm. Uh, rub out, is it right? Yeah, I am going to give that a go. Is that, uh, yeah. that going to be for the uh, dog of a kit build, that one? Yeah, it's difficult to tell where the kit pot begins <laughs> and the <laughs> flash awful. ends, oh, if you know what God. I mean. <laughs> well, my worst one is uh, a Mac 2 VC10. Because, hold on, I've just <laughs> spotted another small problem here. So, um, this is the... we got a closer cam. Okay, can you see the ever-decreasing size in the windows? Oh, I'm really. sure they're all the same size, but actually, they're getting yeah. smaller. It's a fair view. It's an illusion, like, for when the fair view get out the fuselage. This is it's the not clear not parts. Not illusion. <laughs> Good job that I'll be PVA gluing the windows because none of these work at all. Especially, obviously, these down in here which didn't make it to the mould. 
dear, oh dear. So, yeah. Why are you people doing this to yourselves? I don't know. I blame Matt. Matt got me into this. Uh, just one second. I did watch last night's show and Matt did say he was sending you one, Nathan. So, yeah. yeah. He's doing You're it again. Woods yet, mate. And, hey, and if you don't show up, you'll get one as well. Uh, you said there's no, no, it's no good sending Andy one because I know how it's true. I wouldn't yeah. have to do it. Yeah, but peer pressure off the chat will make you do it. Yes, yeah, so yeah. you'll have to do it. No. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, tell you what I'll, bet I'll send you the bison. No, you're right. <laughs> the thing is, how much do that, does that VC10 cost? Is it 70, 80 quid retail? About 80 quid. You expect a little bit. But think of all the hours that. of pleasure you're going to have. That's it. That's a good point, Phil, I think. That's it. You see? Oh, they do a Brescia Atlantique. And if if obviously Telford is on this year, I will take it to him and say, look, this is your kit. This is what is capable from it. Mm. If you're mad. Then donate it so you never have to see it right. to remind yourself again. I'll tell you what, though, all joking aside, right, because we do know they're a bit rough, let's be honest. Yes. But they sell. Yeah. yeah. What let's be honest, it's, it's, you know, it's your you only option. What are you going to do? No, but when we're at Telford, yeah, and he released that kit and he's done the Comet, the Officer, yeah. the Britannia, there's people around there yeah. on a Saturday and a Sunday with two, one, two, I'm walking around and he's and he's normally sold out. So yeah. you don't see many built. No. It, you know, that's the thing, but people buy them. Yeah. But the thing is, you know, if you want to have a large scale VC10, it's all you there is there is nothing else yeah. um uh, yes all right i think there's a back form one but honestly Wait. i'd rather play with that than go down the back form route i've done back yeah. form route for years and yeah i still get the shivers but uh yeah it, it's one of those things it, it's like we often say people complain about certain manufacturers and kits that are out there but if it's the only one what are you going to do you know you have one option out there so there's no point moaning about it you just get on with it for you know? years there was rumor that airfix was going to do a 70 second scale one wasn't there for quite some time yeah but i can't imagine them doing it it is too big you yeah. think their 747 they did years and years ago, what scale was that? Was that 72nd, the old one? Yeah. One more, or fourth one. Is it, you know, and... Yeah, I think they got on another with, level. The, uh, with the Nimrod, didn't they? Mm. Yeah, I uh, suppose Nimrod, Nimrod would probably be the biggest one. I think that didn't sell as well as they probably thought it would again, because it's, it's a big lump, isn't it? Mm. So... You know. The thing is, I think with Mac 2, they are modellers' kits, aren't they? They're not, you know... Yeah. I think the thing is with the Mac 2 kits as well is that, you know, at the end of the day, they're one of those ones that gives you the overall shape and then it's up to you where you want to go with it. So if you want to go into it and detail it and make scratch build all the, the nicey bits for it, then knock yourself out. But it does give you the overall shape to be able to do it without thinking, well, the other option is back form. And that's a whole new level of there's you know you know you've scratch building interiors on back form stuff, you know. So yes. Paul says, "Ask for your money back and swap it for an Argosy." I wouldn't have an Argosy. I'd rather do that one. I told him that this afternoon when we were talking have about it. The, I did say to him, "I'd on, rather do that than the Argosy." Have you seen the Argosy on the forum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Tom's. He finished that a while ago and put it up, and he's yeah. put it up again. So, oh, okay. Show it. Show it again. Show it to the world. It can be done. It can be done. Uh, how long? Have you seen it, but Matt? It's in the... Uh... Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it when he first He's did it. put it in the so... PM store area, isn't he? So, yeah, just rub it in. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what he's doing. Chip. I've done Chip. it. Now you do it. No pressure. Yeah, yeah but he's a real modeller, isn't he? <laughs> um... So, no, he does a cracking job. Phil says, question, what is this bison? I don't know. It's a it's an animal that lives. Can you in make North burgers America. from it? <laughs> yeah, I could say it's a sort of a cow that lives. There in we North go. That's Tom's fantastic. Just shows. That's really nice, isn't it? What scheme are you planning on doing it in, Matt? Same as that, to be honest. But it was going to be the same as that because that's the version I've got. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's, you know. A to lot me, it still looks like an early Thunderbird because it looks like it's hovering. <laughs> yeah. What's, what's even more amazing, it looks like he's painted in extra acrylics. 
Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah, look, proper old school down there. So that's the map yeah, to paint world, isn't it? Mm. I think the thing is as well with those... Did he build it 20 years ago? <laughs> 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 when extra critics is popular. <laughs> the thing is with those sort of kits as well, you've just got to look at it as being the exterior that you've got to worry about. Yeah. Mm. You don't worry about the interior too much because you're not going to see much of it anyway. No. So it's just getting it together and get getting the exterior and getting it to look like it. Mm. I, I agree with you. They're definitely what I would call a six foot model. Looks great from six foot away. You just probably don't want to go up to it very close. <laughs> So that's why mine would be hanging from a ceiling somewhere in flight, so you can't get too close to it. <laughs> uh, right, okay, Simon says, Phil, could you please scratch build a TriStar <laughs> with the white livery, please, for my old squadron of 216? Uh, yeah, doesn't anyone do a TriStar? I think Airfix used to do one back in the day. Mm. Oh, yeah, another 1144, was it? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. No, I don't think anybody else does. No. Well, no. I, I think I've been on a TriStar. Mm. I've been on a British Airways one. Many, many moons ago. Yes, many, many, many moons ago I was on an MD-10. Is that a, a, almost the same, isn't it? Mm. On a Royal Air Force one. Um, uh, silly... Hold on. Um... Uh, uh, yeah, silly question. First kit, small scale, quick build, simple skills, or large scale, so as to try skills and techniques. Thank you. Enjoying the live streams. If it's your first kit, I would keep it simple because you want to have something at the end of it you can be proud of and say, I've yeah. done it. If you're into something that's a big project and it's going to take a lot, it's going to take you a long time to go through, um, and you won't get that sort of instant gratification, shall we say. So I would say keep it simple. 48 scale, to be honest, because it's halfway between all the scales and it's probably easiest to work with. Um, but then you'll have something quite quickly to show your skills. Uh, and then you can progress taking small steps rather than try and take giant leaps. I don't know, what do you guys think? I would say walk before you can run. Yeah. 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 And everyone in the UK starts off with an epic skill. Yeah. Yes. You know, at the end of the day, it's one of those things. I've, I've always uh, a strong believer in that once you've got like the basics um, and i.e. you know how to glue things together, you know how to use filler. You know, it doesn't matter so much about the, the, the finer details like rescribing and re-riveting because they'll come with practice later. But once you've got them down pat, you can build anything. You know, that's it. It's just learning and understanding. Test fitting before, as in dry fitting, we call it, which means is getting the parts physically, coming along, seeing how they go before you commit to glue. And if it doesn't go, why doesn't it go? Fixing the problem and then getting in. That's probably one of the best habits you can get into. And then that way you don't get that thing of like, put the glue on, you stick it on, it doesn't really fit very well. And then you're into a world of pain. So you've either got to pull it off and try and redo it or, you know, work it as it's in situ. And that can be a little bit of a problem. It's not so bad with something like as easy as an end going on, but if you've got halves going together, then definitely it's something you probably want to play with a little bit. Oh, just what I remember, can you put that link on for that thing? That Nebula 75? Yes. And if you haven't seen it, when we've done, go and watch it. It's brilliant. Right. We can't show this because no, obviously can't. I'll get a copyright strike. But Matt <laughs> was clearly bored <laughs> and because sent it. And it must have been. <laughs> can, I, can I just say Phil's even more bored? Because <laughs> I watched it. Happens. Yeah. <laughs> Now, what you posted afterwards, that what I had posted. <laughs> There's nothing <laughs> wrong with the beaver thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm just going to have a little play with the camera a minute because I'm really annoyed with this camera angle I've got. God, thank God he said camera. <laughs> Paul says, don't know why they're called Mac 2 when they look like a lengthy build. It's because that's the speed they go when they throw them out the window. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're 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 
Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it in um, the... Uh, oh, God, I'm in the wrong thing, aren't I now? Hold on, let me do it on this one. I'll drop it in both the chats. You're not allowed to watch it now, but you can scroll back and go and find it. Hold on. Cape. <laughs> now, see what John knows we're doing better. Oh, I'm going to have to sort this out. It's, <laughs> it's driving you mad, isn't it? Yeah. That's a bit you need, it, you need it further away, John. It's not too close to you. Why well, can't I bit... copy and paste? Andy, help. Doing it out of a uh, chat. Out oh, of... sorry. It's done it in. I can't put it into our chat for some reason. It won't okay. allow it in there. Can you try and do it? I've got it into the Facebook one. Sorry, YouTube one. But I can't put it into the other one. Anyway, it's a very, very. Well, I tell you what, just watch it because it's brilliant. <laughs> what am I doing? Nebula said five or beaver. Yeah, yeah, put nebula in there. Nebula, not beaver. Yeah, don't put beaver, put nebula in. Well, you can put the beaver in, that'd be funny. <laughs> uh, uh, where are we? Uh, where are we? Where are we? I've lost my place now because I've had to scroll around a bit. Apologies, anyone who's asked questions. I've just lost it all. Uh, oh, hold on. Um, uh, things that Fly says he's accidentally put some extra thin cement on the canopy of his P47D uh, and it's misted up. Right, how should you go about fixing it? Okay, has the glue fogged? Is it like extra thin and it's literally the weld action is fog the plastic? If it has, yeah, there's not a lot you can do. Tarp. Um, if it's like a super glue type of fogging and it's done it from the inside or the outside or something else like that, you can literally scrape clean it, sand and polish it and bring it back up again. You can try and sand it back. If it's on the outside uh, more than the inside, but if it's just gone through the clear part, so to speak, and it's fogged it, there's not a lot you can do about getting that back. That's pretty much there now. Anybody got any suggestions? No. Uh, like I said, try and sand or buff it out. But... If it, yeah, if it's on the outside, I've done it before, sanded and like polished the can canopy up. Hmm. But if it's gone inside when you fixed it on, then yeah, you are a little bit. Yeah. I have, I have done it from the inside before using Phil's little green polishers but it's uh, right all late to do and you never can get it right at all mm. to be honest with you i never ever use extra thin or any type of weld action glue to put canopies on um because i've been bitten so many times over the years and they fogged up or for whatever reason or just a little bit and when it was commissions they're the worst ones because then you've ruined the clear part so i always use and i must admit it is my favorite is the actual uh uh, Micro Industries Crystal Clear. Uh, the great thing about it is it's really strong and it holds on every canopy I've done. So if it does go wrong or perhaps, you know, you come to that part and you unmask your model and then you look in there, it's got dust or anything in there and it's not easy to get it out or you've got a little bit of overspray or you say it has fogged, you can just come in with a knife underneath, slit it, pull it off, clean off the excess because it just scrapes away and then you can clean it out from the inside as well and then put it back on afterwards and go for it again. But I've been bitten so many times with that happening in the past that I just don't do it now. I always just come in with uh, a little bit of crystal clear. Uh, another one in chat, Phil, Gordy says, Phil, I was watching your build of the Haas V22. What is the styrene filler you mentioned? the styrene filler is just my usual one it's in the uh well it's all over the site and over youtube and everything else it's just basically uh my sprue glue uh where have i got it in tips and trips i think tutorials 
uh, hold on if you just go into the tutorial section on the site and then I've got a feeling it's um, probably in here in, uh, basic modeling videos where I look very young because I am um, hmm. how to use a sander often get there you go make your own styrene filler just click that one and it shows you how to make your own one about different viscosities and about adding coloring to it and stuff like that uh, and that's it that's literally it all you need is some styrene sheet and some um, extra thin do not use sprue everybody I know that says to me it doesn't work and I say to them what did you use they use sprue and that's the point if you use a good quality styrene sheet that's that's what it is that's what you're melting down and what levels and you don't get any shrinkage and all the rest of it if you use some sprue like from a mac 2 kit you know what you're gonna get it's not gonna work and neil says question for phil i've seen a tool called display 80 ma multi-angled sanding slider yes you know what it is and what it does yeah okay now i spoke to merrick at hm hobbies i had a fantastic chat with him on friday afternoon uh me and him were yep kicking the the the, the hell out of the hobby as we do and um he was talking about that thing and i think he's going to send me one down as well so i will have a go with it as he says it could be gimmicky it could be really useful but he don't know what it is really either so he's sending he, me one to have a play with just to see what it's like so um, in chat. sometimes he's in chat isn't he yeah merrick's in chat sometimes but uh, america hm hobbies obviously he stocks all that stuff as well so but i spoke to him on friday and he's putting me together a few bits and pieces just to me to have a play with and see what i think of them um but yeah apparently it's, it is a sanding so you've got the angles for sanding how relevant that is for model making like this um and how often you'd use it i don't know and i'll probably get flamed because it'll be like my very nice glue holder which i have one complaint it's so fucking heavy i can't pick it up but it definitely doesn't move once it's here it's properly it's not going anywhere but it's it is really heavy to try and shift uh, where do you people get your dreadful kits from do you know what the strange thing is we actually buy them <laughs> yeah we don't get given them I've, you know you'd think i'd been given that kit wouldn't you somebody said to me here i feel here's a kit and build it please but actually i've paid money for it or we've paid money for it to have the privilege of fighting with it we like a challenge don't we <laughs> definitely the worst ones the bison though isn't it yes to be honest again i tell you if you it just takes somebody with that extra little bit of want if somebody wants a bison they would do it because all it is is filler and time but you've just got to go in there fill it sand it fill it sand it for probably a couple of weeks and then you'll be ready to build it and it'll be absolutely fine once it's done go on who do we know needs needs them andy it's you what? a man of your talents you should do the bison. No, you're not joking. It, it can't even manage a 70 second bloody kefir. <laughs> Thing <laughs> is, we've got, we've all got like specific interests, aren't we? And, and sometimes there's only like one kit of something that you're interested in. That's correct, Comrade Buller. So that so, means it's you. That's about to say, who's got interest in Russian aircraft? So. I, I was thinking exactly the same. <laughs> You just talk yourself into that one, yeah? Yeah, thanks, John. Oh, well, it is. That's and now you've I've got, got the one. room as well. I have got a lot of crap kits here, and it's because it's the only thing available of that, you know, specific aircraft type. Yeah, that's the reason to put yourself through it, isn't it? Because you love that thing. Yeah, I, I don't love Russian aircraft, you know. <clears throat> John says he's been, he's been uh, not done the hobby for 40 years and he wants to get back into the hobby. Thank you for your reply. I've been doing it for 40 years and trying to get out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, start with an aircraft or tank or something you're interested in. Again, the in. big thing is we always say it, and I think we all agree on it. Pick something you're really into. Some aircraft or tank or vehicle which you really, really like because that will give you enthusiasm to do 
a good job on it. If it's something you don't care about, you won't really put the effort in. But we often say it, and people say about, oh, I want to get something for my mojo and get my mojo going. Build what you really enjoy. You know, that's the thing. If you're into Spitfires or you're into, you know, I don't know, Ford Mustang cars or you're into Tiger tanks, if that's what your thing is, that's what you want to build just to get your interest going again. Yeah. But, but that, don't go for the cheapest, crappiest kit just because you're new to the hobby and you want something cheap because they can be nasty to build. Yeah. And that'll put you off you anyway. You go for something fairly modern, a modern tooling of something. Look on scale, mates. That'll tell you what, when they've been released. Anything that's like been released in the last 10 years should be decent to build. And yeah. Or after. <laughs> Oh, what was I forgot what I was going to say now. Don't look too much at the internet either. Don't think that you've got to go out and buy every bit of aftermarket for it. Just buy a kit that you like, of a subject you like, and just build it out of the box. Absolutely. And to be honest, if you look at my videos, you know, a lot of people out there who do my type of work and things like that they'll throw every aftermarket bit they've got at a, a build but i don't i tend to cherry pick some areas don't get me wrong some of it i will but um a lot of my builds if you look at them i just go straight out of the box you know or something yeah. that's in don't, there don't because they don't got... need to have thousands yeah you know, hundreds of pounds thrown at them just to make them better classic example and I often say about this because it gets asked a lot is that I spent a literally small fortune on the Tamiya uh, Mosquito. Now, don't get me wrong. When I bought that kit, it was cheap anyway. Now it's a horrendous price. But I threw hundreds of pounds worth of engines at it. It had weapons bays. It had obviously the guns. It had all the cockpit. It had everything thrown at it. And I still maintain it made a lot of work for not a lot of detail because the kit detail straight out of the box i think if you're just throwing some replacement harnesses at it um, and perhaps some gun barrels and probably cost you what 20 quid to do all of that and you would have ended up with a kit from a couple of feet away no one would know the difference between mine and somebody who spent a small fortune on it you know versus a straightforward out of the box build you know because again it's a classic example where you can get really carried away with all the aftermarket bits which don't make a lot of difference um if you're just coming back or you're just starting, don't set your expectations too high. You're not going to build award-winning kits right from the word go. It takes time and practice. Yeah, it's one of those things. I think, you know, one of the things is just learn the basics, a lot of things. And to be honest with you, and I will, I will work out them, clearly but i will say there's a lot of people out there who claim to be professional modelers and stuff like that and if you look at their work they can't even fill and sand a joint you know um and they don't have the basics yeah they can weather beautifully don't get me wrong they can airbrush they can weather they can you know make models that fantastic but if you look at the core of their build work it's not very good but then a lot of people and i'm guilty of it you just rush through that bit because you you enjoy the painting and weathering for less but the thing is if you get your your test fitting i think is one of the biggest things to learn testing it and finding out why it doesn't go sanding it till it does go and then that way you won't need any filler further down the line and all those things that go with it as well how much time of practice does it take john just so i know how much longer i've got to wait <clears throat> Well, it's like anything in life. Nothing, you know, unless you're a, a, a natural, natural at it, it's going to take time, isn't it? With anything in life. But the main thing is enjoy it. Absolutely. The whole point really is it's got nothing to do with really about your level. It's your enjoyment. The whole point is it's supposed to be relaxing. It is a hobby and the hobby by its definition, the definition is something you do to relax and to chill out with. You know, if the bit where you're throwing it out the window, then you shouldn't be doing it. As I say, oh, that might be the other half's home. Um, but like I always say with this thing is that if you are into that thing of throwing it out the window and all the rest of it, then honestly, look at Lego. Because there's nothing wrong with Lego, because I do that as well. But Okay, so quick one round for us. What has been your favourite build? Nathan. You've muted yourself. Is that better? That's better. 
Airfix 48 scale Buccaneer. But not while I was good. <laughs> <laughs> right. John? My favourite build ever was when I was a youngster. Oh, hang on. Fucking happy kids. And it was that bad boy. Oh. That was my favourite kit I've ever built. And that's why I'm going to do it again, just to, you know, try and relive my youth a little bit. He's going to bring back those creative juices again. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to starting that one. Good. <laughs> Good. Andy, yours? Mine was a Hobby Boss shooting star. Is it a shooting star? Yeah. Straight wings with fuel tanks on the end. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was one of my first metallic, metal, you know, natural metal finishes that I did that came out really well. And also painting all that you got like red and blue bits on the fuel tanks and on yeah and on, on the front that was all uh, painted in gloss and everything. It was it was one of them kits that I did it. It came out really well with no major issues to it. Straight out of the box again, you know nothing you know you know nothing amazing to it, but it was just it went together really really well. Beautiful, fantastic. Yeah, so that, you know looked really nice. Until it got broken by a floory metal, <laughs> <laughs> fell, fell on it off the top of me. Um, display display case. Oh, yeah, and smashed it to pieces. Never mind. You're gonna have to build another one, though, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. But it's just like it was just like one of them eureka moments where everything sort of like seemed to fall together in one go. Do you know what I mean? And it just like worked really well, really really well. Mm. Very but, nice. Matt, what about you? I've got, thinking about it, because we've been asked this before and I could never really answer it, but the most satisfying build for me was the classic airframe blending Mark 1 that's at the shop. Mm -hmm. And probably one of the nicest kits I've ever built was the AMK L29 Delphin. Was that yeah. one? Stunning, That's... stunning kit. Yeah. That's a cracking little kit, that. I know yeah. these two here have built one as well, and they've both said the same. It's just brilliant. It's a brilliant Actually, little kit. Can I change my answer? <laughs> no, I <laughs> can't change my answer. <laughs> And that's definitely for the planes, and then all oh, for oh, because I do armor and other sorts of, of bits and bobs like that. Um, probably my Tamiya T55 armor. Because again, it's a brilliantly engineered kit, really nice to build, and you can get to time being Russian on the weathering and, and what you know, what you can do with it. So yeah, I think they're mine at the minute. Very good. Uh, one of my favourite builds, to be honest, um, has to be for just a beautiful kit to go together was the ICM Gloucester Gladiator, because it was one of those kits from start to finish. It just went together. You know, I had no issues with it at all. It's a beautiful kit. Simple. It, that's the point. It's a very simple kit. Um, so, but it's a big scale as well. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed every moment of that one. It's one of those ones from start to finish. It was a pleasure to build, which is, you know, usually you get something that gives you a little bit of a niggle along the way, uh, but it just worked. No problem at all. Probably one of my favorite builds has to be the Bandai um, 72nd Perfect Grade Millennium Falcon because again that's more akin to building lego than a model kit so all the fun bit is about the weathering and i do enjoy weathering sci-fi stuff like this type of thing as well construction yeah it just goes together you know but as i say get to the weathering that's when you can really make a difference with it so and i yeah. just can i just say of having seen your gladiator i do think that's i said to matt at the time i think that's the best build you've ever done yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think we all agreed when we saw it, when you see it in the flesh. Yeah, yes, yeah. stunning. Yeah. Again, as I blow my own trumpet here, but everyone says it is the photos genuinely don't do it justice because it's silver, and I can't photograph silvery or metallic things. Camera hates it, 
um, but it does and it sat actually as I'm looking at it right now it's next to my uh, wingnut wing sock with camel which actually yeah. I enjoyed as well and really enjoyed doing the weathering on that one but actually yeah the sock with camels weathered to hell uh, really enjoyed it the the gladiators not but actually I still look at them both and prefer the gladiator gladiator looks a lot nicer it's a nice clean lined aircraft anyway it's a smart looking aircraft and uh, so yeah from that point of view really enjoyed that one but again it's one of those kits where each time I came down here to work on it it was a pleasure to work on it was never one of those where you're like oh I've now got to do this bit or I've got this bit it's going to be a pain so so yeah thoroughly enjoyed that one I'd like to make 25 yeah again to be honest icm stuff i like generally the mig 25 you know again it's just really nice goes together let's say me and john both have the same problem you just got that little tiny error or whatever it is with the underside of the cockpit where it joins the fuselage um it's yeah it doesn't like it but uh again i just got in there like john did i think you cut yours off as well didn't you john the tab yeah i couldn't i couldn't i dry fitted and dry fitted that and just couldn't get it to fit in mm. so I just cut those tabs off and yeah that's what i did went in fine <laughs> yeah so i've got a question Go on. and i asked mine with one what's your most satisfying build that you've put some effort in and you're thinking yeah because mine's like i said mine was my um plastic airframe blending it we needed some work but i'm i was happy yeah. when finished it was one of them of you know you a sense of achievement i think because it was probably my first short run kit yeah and after that i've done the voodoo from balloon obviously i've got that thing off built up there and i think that set me off i have the confidence to have a go at a short run kit i think you know that they can be beaten into submission and and a decent kit come out of it or a decent model at the end of it yeah. so yeah. yeah that was definitely definitely mine you know so yeah Mine would have to be the Fly Wessex then. For now. <laughs> For now. Well, yeah. Well, hopefully, yeah, yeah it well, might change after yeah. this. But at the moment, because yeah. again, the Wessex is one of those strange ones because it's either going to be the Wessex or the Bear. Because yeah. the Bear was just awful from start to finish. Um, and obviously, we re scribed, we re riveted, we used a ton of filler on it as well. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, from that point of view. But. You know, again, I think oh, it's strange because I, I have a real soft spot for that 190. But the 190, I never count because we threw a lot of money at that because it had every aftermarket, had aftermarket engine, aftermarket flaps, aftermarket cockpit. And, you know, we re-riveted it. It had aftermarket everything we could think of into that. So in some ways, it's not like I did a lot of the work. I just had to shoe on it all in. So I would have to say, yeah, the Bear and the, the Wessex for a, a sit back and think, do you know what? That works. I did a good job on that. I'm happy with that. Well then, Andy, what about you? Mine was the Fly 30 Second Hurricane. Because call me weird, I know some people do, <laughs> but I prefer the Hurricane to the Spitfire. And nobody really did a 30 Second Hurricane before that, did they? No, not, no, no, this is not, and then no. that one came out, and I was. Hold on, did Rebel did a monogram, did a hurricane 30 seconds years yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah, but well, that don't count. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, a, de a, de a de half decent one, then, yeah. <laughs> and I was dying to buy to build it, I ended up buying three, uh, built it, really came out, came out, yeah, really nice. Got a few issues, you yeah, know, work, worked through them, got it built, you yeah, know, it's. Still in the display cabinet downstairs now. Looks really nice. Um, yeah, thoroughly satisfying, satisfying finish. Mm. Some of the build was a bit a bit of a challenge. Um, I sub subsequently sold the other two that I'd got <laughs> because I thought I've, I've built one. I'm not going to build another one now. But I'd fair now. I wouldn't mind doing another one, but. I've got that many other things to do. I don't think I'll never have time. What about you? John? What about you, John? Well, I think mine is probably the Meng 410 because I notoriously build at a snail's pace. I'm terrible. And that thing I did in under five weeks. Yeah, you did, didn't you? 
Yeah. For Telford, and I really enjoyed it. I didn't get bogged down in it. I just got on with it and did it. And that is probably my most satisfying build ever. Okay. And it turned out really nice, to be honest. It was a nice job on that one. I was wondering what Nathan Rold is. Yeah, I was from the from the back of the. Yeah, when he before he turned, as soon as he turned it round, I suddenly spotted it, and it's like, ah, it's a group yeah. build. Got it. Yeah. That one. Yeah. I can't do gloss work to save my life, and that's why I don't do as many cars as I'd like to. But this mini worked. It all went well for some reason. And then, you know, it's not something I normally build. Mm-hmm. But this one lives in a special place in the corner of the cabinet where it doesn't get knocked. It gets a bit dusty. <laughs> but for me to get a car done, yeah, with the paintwork, because gloss just kills me. If I get a speck of dust in it, I'm out. And the other thing that made it possible, well, I think, was the polishing sanders. I think I probably built this before the green and white ones came out, but just polishing it. Yeah. I learned that you could spray something as long as you've got a speck of... If the speck of dust was in the bottom layer of paint, then you're going to go back to primer. Yeah. But I learned that with this build, that if you get a speck of dust or an imperfection, you can go back and polish it, respray it. Yeah. Probably have to do that like a uh, hundred times. Mm -hmm. But I built a car. And I don't often build cars. Let's say I knew you when you built that. Why didn't you just ask me? <laughs> to do it. <laughs> yeah, don't ask a car painter. Yeah? <laughs> well, it was just that thing where it was the first kit where I realised putting paintwork down is not the end of the painting. You can rub, you can sand paint, which was a bit of a oh, revelation at the just, time. Just going back to that, when I first started painting cars, I did some work for my dad on his car, and then I don't. I, I, my dad knew quite a bit, but I don't think he knew the full process. And actually, when I flattered it with some 1500 to buff it back up, <laughs> and it, went, it absolutely like just like freaked. It's like, what, what are you doing? And I was like, well, just watch and I'll show you. And it was just like a light bulb moment for him as well, because I think he'd painted cars before, but not to any, yeah. you know, not to any level like that, that, um, that I was working at, I suppose. And yeah, it just freaked him out that you can flat and polish paint. Because mm. people do, you know, oh, it's a bit of dust in it and stuff like that. You could do it like with anything, with any, you know, whatever you paint, you can flat and polish it, really. Mm. But yeah, it was. It was quite a funny reaction I got. Mm. So, <laughs> it's not the best car build in the world, but it's one that I've kept. Yeah, I'm going to be doing that. Yeah, yeah. I do. It's good. It's the bit of Coke bottle for I, the paint. I need to, hey, now I need to build the other two to go with it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know for the yeah, group. do the white and the blue <laughs> yeah. one. <laughs> Yeah, you can do it for the movie. Yeah, movie, yeah, the blue one. Tell you what, though, <laughs> the, the Tamiya mini kit was brilliant to build. Yeah. Oh, it's a gorgeous little kit. I mean, it's it's a Tamiya kit, isn't it? The little rubbery menu that Tamiya sell that I put inside, they were not so good. <laughs> no. Well, they had an effect, don't they? Yeah. I mean, you, you had, had the Fiat 500. You got the Fiat 500? Fiat 500's in the living room. But again, that's something I took from this. I learned yeah. I still don't enjoy doing gloss work, so I don't do many cars, but my Fiat 500's in the living room. So is the Trabant next to the Mini or next to the uh, Fiat 500? The Trabant's in here, but the best that thing one. about a Trabant is it's flat. Yeah. So you I just want to know where the Trabant fell like. in your heart. Yeah, the Trabby's there. I like the little Trabby kit, that's brilliant. But they're flat, so they're easier to do. But that's something that goes for any kit. I started doing it myself is when I prime a model, like even this one, this little hind, is I wet sand the primer, yeah. like micro mesh, and it doesn't have to make a difference when you put the actual colours on. Other sanding products are available. Yeah. Well, yes. Yes, other sanding products are available. <laughs> Oh, where's the delete button? Uh, that's it. Yeah, hold on. Where, where's the uh, end ban? Uh, mute. Yeah, that's <laughs> what, I, what I'm trying to say is don't be frightened to sand and paint. polish your paintwork. Because mm. it can make a hell of a difference. Well, to 
to be honest, like Phil is going to give a proper demo on sanding and polishing paintwork. Yeah, you might paint. be actually seeing that quite a lot for the next five years. <laughs> As we're yeah. doing that one, like me and Matt were obviously we were just we were talking about this one this afternoon. I was saying the thing is, I'm going into that kit eyes wide open. I know it's crap. Um, so again, it's very similar to like when I treated the with the bear build and with the fly Wessex. You know, it's not going to be any fun. So I'm not going to try and make it nice. We're just going to get it together and then get the filler into it and then just work at it and if it takes a week of just sanding and filling sanding and filling sanding and filling and then literally i will wet and dry the entire thing you know right the way over everything and then we'll give it a wash and we'll dry it off then obviously we'll go back and tackle any rescribing it needs to do which it is uh, and all of those things and then give it a coat of primer and then literally look at what we've got and if that means then it needs then to be sanded back again and go again and then through it then so be it but it, as soon as that has finished and you've actually done all of that you're into no different from a Tamiya kit because you've got everything ready as you want it. So your painting then is going to go through and all your jobs you're going to do will be no different from any other kit because you've beaten it all into submission. And because this is really an external model, because there's no real, it has got a flight deck of such, but you're not going to see it. But I'm doing it gear up. So I'm not going to have any problems with like wheel well de uh, detail or anything else like that. So it just will be a case of saying, right, do you know what? Let's just get it in there. To be honest, like we ended up doing with the bear because the bear bomber, it got sanded and filled so much. It had no detail left in it anyway. So then we ended up re-riveting and re-scribing the entire thing. So uh, well, again, you think that that bear bomber was from Trumpeter, who's a mainstream manufacturer. Mm. Mm. That worked great kit. I know it's early Trumpeter, but yeah. at the end of the day, it's still Trumpeter. And, yeah. you know, and then you compare their budget to what? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Guy who runs Mac Two is is on his own, and he does it on his own, I think, or it's even yeah. somebody else. But it's a very small company, and he does tackle some yeah, interesting yeah. subjects yeah. that yeah. other people aren't going to go near. Not especially in seventy second, anyway, because mm. uh, he he has got a real soft spot for obviously RAF transport aircraft. Clearly, yeah. Through the era, yeah. Um, and fair play to him, uh, you know. Mm. Uh, he gets a bashing from people, but... But again, I think that's yeah. that thing. In some ways, I think people often get bashed when they're a little bit disappointed. You know, yeah. to be honest with you, you could spend 200 quid on this, um, you know, and to be honest with you, the detail is not very good. You know, and it is... All right, it's big, but it's 200 quid for a tiny, you know, kebab. You know, with and the, the detail in this and the plastic is not nice you know and all the rest of it and okay you could turn around and say yeah but obviously you've got the limitations because this is a lot of licensing in with this one and all the other things that go with it but you know yeah it, it's it's where you do it isn't it sometimes the limited run if we were saying before and we've spoken about other companies if they've done like a spitfire you know it's yeah. easy money you'd sell tons of them this you know you're not going to sell like how many people realistically want a 70 second vc10 you know, it's not a mainstream scale because most people don't know where to put it. I can say quite a few from last year's Telford because it well, did sell a lot. But I know what you're saying. It's yeah. one of them where probably buying it will sit in the stash. And if anybody yeah. tackles it, to be honest with you, if you're doing that one, it might inspire people to actually dig them out. And hopefully, you know, if I'm yeah. tackling mine, it might just think, well, all right, get the right mindset, mm. which is the key to doing one. And yeah. Give it a go. What what are you gonna lose at the end of the day? You might come out and think, My God, I've learnt something here. I've learned a bit of filling or scribing or Yes. You know, your skill set's gonna move on if you can complete it and you you'll be satisfied once you've done it as well because it's took something to get to the stage of it being finished. Yeah, absolutely. But again, I think really, you know, with that one it is what we call limited run kit at its most basic you know so in some ways though i think it's easier because with that one you could use like a, an epoxy to glue it together and yeah. because it's big you know you've got time to jostle it around and to band it all up and it doesn't matter if you've got bands running around it and they leave track marks and stuff because you're going to sand it anyway 
So yeah. it'd be a case of literally just chuck it together as best as you possibly can. Uh, and then once you've got the fuselage together, that's a big battle out of the way. Like the wings again, getting those wings together, get them seamless, you know, making sure they're in. That's going to be a huge battle, getting the wings fitted, getting them done. That'll be it. But once that is, the rest of it should actually be pretty straightforward. And to be honest, I am looking forward to doing it. You know, it'd be one of those ones, you'll be able to see it. It'll sit on the other side of the bench working over there because it'd be one of those, I'll sand it, fill it, leave it. Sand it, fill it, leave it, you know, and work our way through it. So here's a question then. Mm -hmm. As modelers today, are we spoiled with the quality of like, like Phil says, the AAA manufacturers like Tamiya, Bandai, are we spoilt by the quality of kits they're chucking out? Whereas like some of us older time modellers from 40 years ago with what we were getting then, are we spoilt a little bit today, do you think? Yeah, of course Are not. our expect expectations that much higher? Yes because of the way things have moved on in industry, I think. So yeah, I think that's well Absolutely. Boring. I think, you know, also the, the biggest problem is, is that, you know, you get YouTubers come on and they'll bash a kit, you know, mm. and they'll say it's unbuildable. And if you're putting it up against uh, Tamiya, Zukamori, you know, one of the AAA title companies, then yeah, but most of the times I feel from a modeler is that it's basic skills. You know, yes, it's got a gap, and well you know if you went back not be funny to your era john <laughs> you know sepia you know but that was normal wasn't it you would you would have a gap that was part of modeling that's what you did the bit yeah. now where people complain because there's a gap you know and you know yeah. i know there's that argument and we've spoken obviously to pramjit and all the rest of it at airfix about it saying you know technically with 3d scanning lidar and all the rest of it kits in theory should be perfect there's no excuse anymore but there still is because there's often problems with various things through tooling through injection molding and stuff like that and you can end up with a dodgy seam or a, a wonky thing that goes together and stuff like that you know but is that taking away from the hobby because i always say you've got modeling You've got the AAA modelling, like the Tamiya kits, which usually do not need any filler whatsoever. Then you've got Bandai, which is one up from Lego, because their kits are just amazing the way they go together and the way that you don't even need glue. And to be honest, I've only got two bits of glue on my entire Millennium Falcon. The rest of it is just all pushed together. And then, obviously, you know, you really are into Lego. It's so, uh, and that's it. But I think people have forgotten the basics of how to use filler, test fitting, dry fitting, because they have been spoiled with AAA titles. And yeah, at the risk of being shot down in flames and being totally slated, I think that's the thing nowadays, is that you've got modelers out there that are actually painter and weatherers. Yes. Yeah. And they all they want is a perfect kit so then they can show off their skills of painting and weathering. But then there's the old school modelers that have grown up with the likes of Airfix, Hella, Matchbox, that actually enjoy the building process mm. more so necessarily than the painting and weathering. I think, to be honest, there's more, there's, okay, here, here we go before we leave stage left. You know, there's, <laughs> from a YouTube point of view, what's happened over the last, I would say, five years is there's been a new breed of modelers who have come on. They're quite happy to sit there and show you how to paint and weather and all the rest of it, but they won't show you actually how to build a kit. They'll say to you, yeah, and that's it, and that's glues in there, and that's it, and then you pop this bit on, and then this bit comes along here, and it goes on there, and that's it. And then they'll go into it about the painting and weathering, and occasionally they'll chirp up and they'll say, well, that's rubbish because it doesn't go together. And they'll dismiss it, you know? 
where the, you know and i often and i'm not being funny and i go along sometimes and i've done it and i know you guys have done it as well i've built the same kits as some people have said are unbuildable and said didn't yeah. have a problem with it yeah i've had that i mean yeah you know, i'm not being funny. That. nathan is a classic example over the last couple of weeks nathan's been putting videos out on you know for us at flory models as well about the pitfalls of the um tornado now I built the tornado years ago when it very first came out and didn't really have many problems with it apart from the one which Nathan's covered as well where the front end didn't seem to go on there seemed to be something going on but being honest with you I put that together really quickly um, and again more into the painting and weathering side of it on that video so I didn't cover the reasons whilst it didn't go together it just pointed out it didn't go and I ended up just putting a smidge of filler in it sanding it job done carry on you know Nathan nice has gone and now showed us why it doesn't go and how to stop that from happening which is fantastic but a lot of people have slated that kit because of that fault yet to me mm -hmm. i just well look it doesn't really go i'm just going to put a bit of filler we'll sand it and away we go to me it wasn't a, an issue it just needed a bit of filler you know yeah. But again, what Nathan showed over the last few weeks is, is that actually if you take your time and actually look at the parts and work out why it doesn't go, you know, and then take your time test fitting it, dry fitting it, putting it in. And if it needs a bit of plastic card, you know, or a, a, a redo of it, like we were saying about the tornadoes is very weak around the tail planes. Um, and about pinning them with an extra pin and things like that. It's a, a good way of looking at modeling from a modeling point of view, you know? Mm. I, I really like building this kit. We don't, you've done enough of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I wish I could be as, as quarter good as some of these guys are that do the weathering and the, the painting of kits, but for me, it's always been about the building. Hmm. Yeah. That's why I enjoyed the Airfix Buccaneer. I had to take breaks from it because it got oh, a bit monotonous. I'm but hello. I enjoyed building it. And it took some proper building, that thing did. Yeah. And that, yeah, I'm not being funny. We were saying, like, obviously, last year I did the b52 we did the the bear we did the fly wessex and i think from a, a year's point of view i have more enjoyment the bit where you stand back and you go do you know what that kit was pretty awful but i really enjoyed it because i beat it you know and it looks really nice and again it wasn't a case of i actually beat it a built a beat the kit is that i've just built it and got on with it and used what I've been doing for years of sanding and filling, rescribing, re-riveting and all those things to make it look half decent, you know? And I came away with a great sense of satisfaction of, you know, and sort of pride in my work, which I think is a nice thing rather than other kits. And to be honest, Tamiya's are classics. You chuck them together. It's not really me. That's the engineering, you know? Yeah. From a modeling point of view, it's not really modeling. It's more construction, isn't it? Yeah, because we, we, we were talking about it the other night when we were on Skype that especially like the magazines nowadays, I can remember the old days of like scale aircraft modeling, for example, where they used to have full builds and they used to like convert using things like balsa wood and stuff to different aircraft. Yeah. Whereas now you buy the magazines, there's hardly anything about the building side of it. It's all about the painting and weathering. Mm yeah and that's the point you know i don't think people scratch build anymore like they used to you know it used to be the thing where people would scratch build like you were saying with balsa or plastic card or you know laminate balsa with the plastic card and that uh to do conversions i don't think people actually do that anymore i don't think it's even a skill set most people have got to think right i'm going to get the calipers out we're going to get the drawings out and we're going to make that from a single seat to a two seat most people i don't think can even do it you know it's not something i'd want to tackle you know Normally. being honest i i would <laughs> rather buy an aftermarket or the next version but yeah. in chat nigel says something good he says um give an unbuild unbuildable kit to a 10 year old and they'll have it done in an afternoon yeah yeah very true because they'll not be 
So critical will is yeah, uh, the finicare, they'll just want it together just to get an end product. So yeah, fair yeah. play to that comment. Yeah, absolutely. I think <laughs> it's that it's that thing with the internet though that everyone sees these fantastic models built by, you know, top class modelers and they think that is the norm, that's what you should be able to produce from that kit. And it's yeah. not, is it? It depends on your skill set, your you know your experience yeah you know i think the wonderful thing about this hobby is is that you get guys who you know obviously are old school um and love the construction side of it and they perhaps they don't even do much weathering they just paint and finish your model which you know kudos absolutely then you get other people who you know obviously got the skill sets for a bit of everything but I think the more modern modeler expects a kit to go together with no issues whatsoever. So he can probably get on more to the weathering uh, stage of the painting and weathering. You know, that's what it is. It's almost like a means to an end, you know, because most people have to, you know, you build a model, certainly modular so you can paint it is easier than rather a whole thing but it does make you wonder if tammy are suddenly released of pre-built models but they're not weathered or painted how many they would sell would people buy them so they haven't got to build them because they can just paint and weather them would that be a thing we could do a build service <laughs> <laughs> you know but it makes you wonder if they would actually sell anything you know yeah the thing is, I think, you know, like John Ron about the magazines now, and that, that, I can, I hope so, that's my chat. Um, I think you've got to think some of the magazines are out there. That's the company that they sell that product. So they're going to push their product because they want to sell it. Yeah. So, you know, there are, a, a, well, let's maybe AK and MIG, aren't they? Let's be honest. That's what they, they sell, weathering products. So the, obviously yeah. their magazines are going to feature their products. So people go, oh, I'll buy that. Yeah. It's natural. Why not? It's well, an order. Would. You would. Everybody would do it. So, um, I can't see, I can't, first of all, I can't see a problem with that. Well, I know where John's coming from. But it's a bit of a what, you know, um, and what they're doing, I think. Yeah. And I think that's in, in the past even probably the past years where my modeling's changed. Whereas if I'm honest, most of my kits used to end up on the shelf of doom because I used to have an expectation of what a kit should look like from what I was seeing on the internet in magazines and stuff. Whereas probably the last year I've just got a kit off the shelf and just built it out of the box. And I've, it sort of dawned on me now that, you know, don't have too many of these expectations of, you know, a showpiece model. Just enjoy the hobby. But you're going to get more satisfaction from actually finishing something than putting a yeah. box on the shelf for doom. Yeah. And there's a say, because there's a lady I watch who does figure painting, and I've said it before, and her motto kind of is, it's finished if not perfect yeah you know everybody's self-critical we can all pick faults with our own kits and models and stuff till the cows come home but somebody else looking at it if they ever get the pleasure if you take them to a show will not see the faults you know are there do you know what i mean unless you put yourself in a competition environment where you're going to be scrutinized mm -hmm. yeah then you're opening yourself up for criticism you've put yourself in that situation but if like what we do we put on a sig table they're on the display uh, or they're there in the shop for people to see, you know, this folks in. If somebody goes, well, you know, how was it? I'll go, yeah, it's all right there. That's a troublesome bit. There's a bit of a fault there. I'm not I'm not afraid to admit that I make mistakes. God, I make shit loads of them. I think, yeah, at the end of the day, yeah. it, it, it's one of those things where people, if, you yeah, know, the one piece of advice I would give anybody going into the hobby is literally build it for you. You know, at the end of the day is that, you know, when you look at your model, if you're happy with it, it's that old adage we go back to, then that's how it should be. So, you know, if you like doing the painting and weathering and you don't really care for the building, as long as you enjoy it, you know, then yeah. that's so be yeah. it. It's up to you. But yeah. I think the only thing that annoys me is where you get people 
you know, and to be honest, it usually is the, the people with the biggest voice shout the loudest and, you know, and they'll slag off stuff. And um, it's like, why, why, why are you doing that? There's nothing wrong with it. You know, bit of base, uh, so it needs a bit of putty. So what, does that make it unbuildable? Does that mean, you know, it's not worth, you know, 50, 60 quid kit because it's got a tiny little join on it, you know? But again, it's like, it's just, I think that's just too generalizing because you could build something and I could build the same kit. We could have different problems. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. we've done that because we've built the same kit, yeah, all of us. Yeah. Um, you know, you pick up different things, but again, it's it's the person who's building its skill set as well. You know, so everybody's on different levels. Mm. No, it's a hobby. You're supposed to enjoy it. it. Mm. Yeah. Don't get stressed out about it. If you need a bit of filler, give it a bit of filler and sand it. Not as what filler's for, you know. <laughs> yeah. One yeah. day, you know, they will be perfect kits out there. Well, there is. It's called Bandai. If you've never built a Bandai kit, try theirs. <laughs> yeah. Just can I just answer a quick question that I've seen on our chat ages and ages and ages ago? Somebody's asked us about the Blue Line Attacker mm. uh, that I was trying the other day, and will we be stocking it and we will be selling it? And yes, we will. But it won't be as of any time soon because of what's going on. Yeah. Um, yeah. But hopefully by the end. I would say by autumn, shall we say, or sometime over the summer, mm -hmm. we'll get the blue line in. And I mean, the paint sets, I think I'm going to start stocking now because I can get them readily anyway. Uh, but I'm going to shoot a message over to Attacker to say we'd like to stock the blue line singles as well. So, yes, we will. Yes, yes. definitely. I'm just pressed, I have to just say. One that's in chat that's been asked a couple of, couple of times. Rob Wood yeah. says, has anyone built the thirty-second Tamiya Phantom Marines version? If so, what's your thoughts? The thirty-second Phantom, yeah, I've built it lots. <laughs> Very nice. It's it's a Tamiya, isn't it? Yeah, it's Tamiya thirty seconds. They're all really nice. Again, if just be mindful if you built like the Marines one, which is the same as only the other ones. Well, apart from the E. Um, but yeah, it's one of those ones where it, it, it is what it is. You can put bits to it. You know, there's lots of aftermarket out there, but to be honest, doesn't really need it. Um, it's a great kit all the way through. Enough said, really. Tamiya. Yeah. It's, it's just really the F15 that's a bit. Well, the F15, I always think everyone has problems with that screw thing for the wings, and yeah. you get the step, and I've never screwed it. I screwed the first one I built, but then when I did the other, the next C I did, I didn't bother screwing it. And when I did the mud hen, the uh, strike eagle, I never screwed it and never had the step like everybody pulls, seemed to pulls have. Pulls it too far down. Yeah, yeah, I think it over pulls it too far down. Yeah. Tim's question: um, Their own glue should work on the tracks. He's on, a, he's on about tank track. Extra thin should work. If not, the white top boots should work. Definitely work. Oh, it's on Tamiya yeah. tracks. Uh, Jason Science saying about uh, which F-16 do they discontinue? They discontinued the Aggressor, and the Aggressor was a bit of a good kit because it had all the versions inside one box. So you could make it with the big mouth or the small mouth and the different engines and the different HUDs and the stuff, but they've pulled it. So now you have to go back to the normal versions of doing the National Guard one, which is the Block 52. Uh, 2532 um, and then obviously you got the block 50 CJ one um, so yes that that's what they've done by the looks of it they've pulled the good kit the one kit you needed because one fitted them all they've pulled it by the looks of it it's weird for Tamiya to discontinue a kit as well isn't it mm. yeah but they've obviously figured out they can yeah they've obviously figured out no yeah. one's buying any other kit because they can just yeah. buy one yeah. and that one and do them all uh, yeah. let's answer Roger uh, yes, I always put my tank wheels on after I've painted it because I weather the hull up first and then put the wheels on and the tracks. So yes, which is will do with my uh, M51 behind me. So just yeah. make sure, Roger, you don't put any weathering products on. As I normally put, this is not the best tank to show, but I think I've stuck them on, but any anything that these are joined to, like your bogies, yeah, keep them clean 
because it it can affect the fit of uh, of the of the bogies going on. So just wrap a bit of tape around them or mask or or whatever just to keep that bit clean. And then when you've weathered it, painted it, whatever, you can take it off and slot all your wheels and suspension bits on. Cool. Very good. Yeah. Uh, there was one just down here. Uh, I just saw one. So go. Uh, why is there no kit of the HMS Queen Elizabeth? Give him a chance. Crikey, it's only just <laughs> come out. <laughs> they just it themselves, they? Yeah, that's it. Literally, it's only just got operational itself. Give them all a chance. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. I think that's about it. Then is it, guys? Yep, yeah, think so. Think so. Are we all done? Yeah, all right, yep. Cool. Well, look, thank you very much for joining us this evening for our very in rant. Yeah, rant, <laughs> rant is uh, and all the rest of it. Uh, we will be back with you on Monday afternoon. You come and join us where hopefully, well, next part of this is definitely up because I've just got to finish the edit. I did some editing on this today, so I'll get the rest of the editing done for this. So this will get you to this stage. You'll be here. So on Monday, I might try and get this into primer. That'll be the clue for that. And then obviously I'll be getting going onto the B17 as well. So we'll be starting on that one as well next week as we make our way through. So yes, so thank you to everybody for joining us this afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the world. <laughs> and uh, thank you for the guy for joining us as well. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and we good. will see you all again very soon. So take a night, everybody. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.